there's the Computer History Museum. What? Who, me? Who, you? I don't know. Are you going to go and see the Computer History Museum? Oh. There's a bunch of people yeah. coming in, too. Right? Like this. So who are you? <laughs> who am I? My name's Daniel Lewin. Who are you? Robert. Robert. How <laughs> you know are who you? I know. I know who you are, and I know what you did. I saw what you did, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, we're standing here in the uh, Computer History Museum. We right? are. And we're going to get a tour from uh, you and Gordon, Gordon Bell. And... Gordon can really give you the tour. Yeah. Um, but we're standing here in front of the Mac, and I heard you were on the original Mac team. Is I was true? on the original Mac team. Yep. In fact, I worked um, about the first ten people in that group. First ten people, you were one of the first ten people on the original yeah, night team? Yeah, I was. With Atkinson and with well, I guess we were uh, Bill actually wasn't there then. And Bill was over in the Lisa division then. Really? Yeah, he wasn't. Uh, Andy Hertzfeld and Burl Smith were the two core engineers. And a few other people as well. So we're, we're, we're getting a tour here through uh, the Google uh, These are the Google camp. guys, yeah. Yeah. So we'll start after this. I was working for Sony before I went to work for Apple. And this was the first um, keyboard-driven machine to store text on a micro cassette, which was a sub-standard cassette. Um, standard cassette being a, a very, excuse me, a fixed speed, which was how micro computers stored all their information on standard cassettes until right. Shugart built the floppy. And, well, now, now you work at Microsoft now, right? I work at Microsoft now, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and your son works at Apple, right? He does. He's a big guy over there. He works at Apple. <laughs> yeah. So if you go in the Palo Alto Apple store, you'll meet... Your name's Jesse, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Very cool. In the mini store, the first mini store. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, um... So what, what was working on the original Mac team like? It was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Let me get over here because lighting yeah. is a little bit No, we had a really good time. Yeah. Um, people worked really hard. I don't think anybody worked 80 hours a week. That was a lie. People were there 80 hours a week, but they weren't working. <laughs> <laughs> Playing around, uh, yeah, because most of you people, guys had a nice piano in the I lobby. I was there. unusual in that I had a family, so so I worked, uh, you know, plus or minus sixty hours, depending, and more when I was traveling. But um, everyone else just kind of lived there; they didn't have families. So and we were all, on average, uh, twenty-six years old. In fact, virtually everyone on the team within a twelve-month window was the same age. So we had. Um, Steve, obviously, and Mike Boych, Mike Murray, Joanna Hoffman. Um, we were all in the first group. Barbara Colkin uh, came in from Xerox. Um, Mike Boych and Mike Murray from HP. Uh, Joanna had been at Apple already prior to that. I'd been doing work with the Lisa organization, market development work. Right. So I came in to do the... Um, is there a Lisa around? The opportunity is yeah, Lisa up on a shelf over there. Okay, we'll get that later. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, see it? Yeah. Yeah. The Lisa was the precursor, as most people know, to the Mac. Um, and uh, it had rectangular pixels, though, which were very bad. And we went for square why, pixels. Why are those bad? We were just hard to deal with. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> Ask Bill Atkinson. He designed it. And then he came over uh, to the Mac division when we consolidated things built in. Right. Uh, but we borrowed most of the core technology, quick draw and all of that, um, you know, from the Lisa group and then built this little ROM that had all these um, you know, calls that you could make to build the system. So what did you what did you do on the team? Um, I was were you were you marketing overhead or management uh, overhead? No, I wasn't management overhead. <laughs> we were there was no management. <laughs> there was no management. <laughs> there was no management. It was a free for all. Um, no, I focused on the markets though. So I was uh, while the term evangelism more or less was coined then. Um, and Mike Boych was the core lead evangelist. 
um, I was I put opportunist on my card. So I was figuring out the opportunities, and I quickly honed in on the university marketplace, higher education in general, and set up all of the direct distribution relationships. I broke the distribution model. Apple had only sold through dealers prior, uh, and I sold direct to institutions, uh, licensed them to become uh, level two service centers so they could do their own board swap and those kinds of things, which was radical. Um, but um, the universities, uh, after launch, um, took in 89,000 computers in 90 days. Uh, I remember that vividly because it was all the manufacturing capacity that the company had and that the dealer network wouldn't take. So we were able to actually kind of save the penalties, um, which would have been uh, accrued against the company for not taking the inventory that it had ordered and the manufacturing capacity behind it. But it was a lot of fun. Wow. It was a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. Well, cool. We're going to get a little tour of the museum yeah, here. We're definitely going to get a tour of this place. There's a Next machine over there, too. Yeah, and yeah. you were a co-founder of Next, right? I was, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was a fun thing. <laughs> that was really fun. And I was part of the management overhead there. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of great people at that point. Yeah, and they, a lot of them ended up back at Apple, right? A bunch at Apple. There's a bunch at Microsoft, frankly. A lot of the core architects and software designers, uh, William Parker, Jack Greenfield. Um, Let me get back on the other side of you. Yeah, no, there's a lot of them. Um, a lot of them in various places. Some of them went to Pixar, some went to Apple. Um, you know, a lot of the core software folks, a bunch of them uh, went to, uh, to Microsoft as well. Uh, a lot of them ended up uh, on the sales side, some of the engineers went off to Netscape as well. So they're, you know, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. It was fun, yeah. And the next OS really ended up as the current Mac OS, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Interesting thing there. Um, Rick Rashid, who runs research and right, set up Microsoft. Microsoft at, yep. Yeah, at Microsoft. Rick was a professor at Carnegie Mellon. We licensed the kernel um, from him. Uh, his project was called the Mock Project. And uh, Avi Tavanian, who's sort of Apple's chief software guy, was a grad student then. And we licensed the kernel from Rick and CMU and hired Avi to lead the team. And that was the. It's going to be a Carnegie Mellon day. Did you, you didn't go to Carnegie No, I didn't. Hey, there's Gordon. Hey, hi, Gordon. Hi. Greetings. How you doing? Right. Gordon's there. How are you, man? Oh, good. 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 Nice I love you. your tie. Thank you. It's Thank perfect. You. Yeah. Wow. You should meet my son, Jesse. Oh, okay. Gordon Bell. Jesse Lilly. Nice to meet you. you. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's going to be, I was just commenting. It's perfect. going to be a Carnegie Mellon Day because AJ oh, is, is a a Carnegie Day. just graduated from yeah. Carnegie Mellon. And oh, yeah. You taught at Carnegie Mellon, yeah, right? I was there. All good things well, came from right. Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> All good things. Came out of Carnegie Mellon. Well, you yeah. bet. Wow. So do you want to start outside and uh, then give us a little tour of this place? And, uh, sure. And talk about what why you we started been, We've been getting... Uh, We're just hanging around. Hang, yeah, but th you know this area much better than I in yeah. terms of, of the... Uh, the whole PC gallery. Yeah. This is a fun spot. Yeah, a lot it really of good stuff. Is. It's uh, you know sort of it's a great place to look at at sort of how the whole PC developed. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, this first. is uh, a lot of my childhood is here. Yeah. yeah. The, the next was when I was in college, and the uh, earlier machines, you know, the Apple II was when I was in junior high. So. What do we get? You know, that sort of ranks my childhood from there to there. <laughs> so, Robert, what was your favorite video game? Oh, uh, God, Choplifter <laughs> on the Apple II. <laughs> uh, what, like, one of my high school friends wrote that. So. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Do I like Hunt the Wumpus? We, we actually, I, I shouldn't admit this on videotape, but our high school had a, a couple of really good programmers who would um, break all the copy protection on all the Apple II oh, games. Yeah, yeah. So oh, we, yeah. as soon as one of our family brought, bought a video game, we'd bring it to school, he'd break it and put it in the library. So we had yeah. a library of yeah, we know about <laughs> pirated you guys. software. Yeah, we know about you guys, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was... You know, it was just for us, you know, yeah. but uh, well, that's a good stuff. couple of years afterwards, they stopped putting copy protection on the games. Right. <laughs> no, no, they figured no. we were going to break it anyways. Yeah. So. Yeah. But let's go uh, outside and go start outside. out front go and outside. sort of get the whole tour okay. instead of starting here in the middle. Good. Okay. Well, just back. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm never back. <laughs> so this is wild. How was it? Was that fun? It was fun. Yeah. So, um, so, so who are you? And look at me. Forget the camera. I'm Gordon Bell. Yeah, and uh, 
I'm one of the founders of the museum, and uh, this is how long a dream did it take? Because you started this museum, really, right? Well, you know, it's almost 30 years now. Uh, I kind of started in my closet, and uh, I needed to unload things at uh, uh, out of out of my house, and uh, I started uh, in a closet, actually in a coat closet at deck. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Down. Down. Can we have a uh, down yeah, mic? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I started there. Uh, and I put uh, artifacts in the coat closet and deck, and sort of had lots of devices, uh, and sort of put it, portrayed it as a evolution in really in semiconductors and vacuum tubes and all of that. And so we started collecting uh, that, and then ultimately it got big enough, and then we moved it to uh, uh, to the Marlboro Building. Now, now this was at digital, digitally. And when did you start collecting? Uh, actually, about 30 years ago. Uh, so and what were you doing at digital back then? I was. I was head of engineering at that point, VP of R&D, and, uh, uh, and what kind of computers were you working on back then? Well, those those were those were the PDP one. I mean, sorry, PDP eleven. That was sort of when we had the eleven. 1975, we started the VAX project, and that was introduced in 90, uh, 1978. So that was uh, sort of my background, and and there. And then in uh, in '79, about actually about 26 years ago, we opened as a kind of a real museum in one of the deck buildings. Uh, Let's and, get away from then, these guys a little sure, bit so we can sure. uh, and then, uh, stay there. <laughs> Uh, ironically, then, uh, as we opened in that muse in museum, why actually one of the first visitors I had the pleasure of taking through was was Bill Gates uh, when he was uh, just starting Microsoft, and we were uh, buying DOS for uh, uh, you know the the PC as the PC was starting to form. I guess that was probably in eighty. And now you work 82. for Bill, right? Yeah, now I work for Bill. <laughs> yeah, that's we how, all work for Bill. We all work for Bill. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Wow, and how big is this museum? This is a pretty, uh, pretty big. Yeah, we, well, we have 120,000 square feet, and uh, the exhibit, the area that we're going to look at is about 11,000 square feet, which is called Visible Storage, okay. which is uh, kind of a serpentine timeline of really mostly of hardware. Um, and then uh, there's an, there are a couple of other exhibits there. Uh, I think John's going to take you through the uh, a new one that just opened on the history of chess, which wow. is really our attempt to uh, portray software and hardware software and how how something like uh, how complex programming uh, and hard hardware evolves. To, now, now, how much of the collection is your it was done by you personally? Uh, I actually I don't know. I think I've got uh, probably contributed there or on loan, uh, you know, and I'll eventually contribute. There are like probably 500 artifacts in there, and then. But on the other hand, a lot was proactive collection. Uh, so we essentially had a, a list of things that we wanted to collect, and so we went out of our way to. Uh, collect stuff, uh, you know, like uh, you know when Livermore had uh, had their museum, and then they needed to uh, deaccess all of the components. Why we got got a uh, the Cray one, a Cray one. We got the 6600 6, from them. We got pieces of uh, various Cray Cray computers from uh, from time to time. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it. You know, I think we basically had a had a plan, uh, and the plan was really to make sure we collected the first uh, artifact in a uh, in a series, and then we, and then to collect the major artifact, and uh, and then uh, and then also just to collect some things that didn't work. So we demonstrate the fact that not everything works. So there's, for example, there's a large collection of memory devices that, uh, of attempts to make different kind of memory devices when people were moving from the well, first they were searching for the core, core memory, which was a, a 1950s uh, invention, and then with integrated circuits beginning 20 years later in the 70s, why people were searching to replace the core, and then the integrated circuit really uh, is what did that. Yeah. So essentially, there are you know millions of stories in there about how uh, how things evolved, 
What's what's your favorite piece in the museum? Uh, God, it's hard to see a you know think of a favorite piece. I like to look at you know some of the th things that are just uh, physically elegant. I mean, it's, uh, you know, crazy craze computers are all all like that. They're um, you know we've got all but uh, one one which is the thirty six hundred that was pretty nice looking, but um, uh, you know it's. Uh, it's hard hard to say. I mean, uh, about what what my favorite uh, uh, you know piece is. But uh, what's significant since we're outside in front yeah. of the building? What's significant about this building? Because we talked uh, about that last time. Oh right? yeah. What's significant about the building is I think the you know uh, I guess you know from my point of view the museum is you know now I'd say from the start of when it was opened at Deck as a as a uh, a museum, and then it became a public museum. I think in r around 1980, uh, so it's 20, you know, 25 years uh, of being public. Um, is uh, that uh, you know I I had hoped that we would reach a stable point, and and it, you know in a way it's taken longer uh, than I had hoped. But on the other hand, I think it's certainly realized a lot more than I. I had uh, envisioned for it because, uh, and that's, uh, and that really is because we've gotten so many uh, people involved in the, in the doing of it. And then the key thing was to move to Silicon Valley because I mean, as, as we know, there, uh, computing is uh, there's very little computing in Boston these days. So it was fitting that it start there, but now it's uh, really a semiconductor. Uh, story among other things, but it's also a software question. Come on over so here, anyway, Dave. Those were the. Like CNN, those were some of the uh, <laughs> things. Yeah. And who are you? I'm the. <laughs> well, who are you then? <laughs> I want to invite. Dave Wiener's personal assistant. <laughs> no, Dave Weiner, sorry, Dave Weiner's personal <laughs> assistant. He does that. Here, I'll give you a buck. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I hate that. <laughs> okay. So who are you though? Andre Veneer. And you're starting a Silicon Valley company too, right? I am. So on, on I doing pre four one one. I hope in thirty thing. years to be displayed in this. Oh, this that's building. great. Well, in, now I don't think the goal of an entrepreneur should be to be in this building. <laughs> 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 because that means you got old and uh, replaced and. Uh, right? well, sooner or later, getting old is better than not getting old. Sort of thing. <laughs> or having it in there. No, I would think the goal. To me, the goal is to have something in there that I mean. I hope it means that something was worthwhile doing, and yeah. so that's an indication of. Uh, you know, we'd like to say we collect the significant uh, artifacts. And you, you have uh, the, some of the newer stuff you have. Is you have the original Google computer too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. We went. You know, we were very aggressive at collecting and proactive collecting. You know, as opposed to uh, being sort of a, a really historic. You know, well, I'll say we are a real historical museum, but in fact, waiting for somebody to uh, to tell us that it was significant, and then. Uh, and then trying to go look around for those devices. Now, now did you plan it out? Because you're sort of right in between the Microsoft campus here in Silicon Valley, which is about oh, yeah, half a, a great, mile that way, plan. and the Google uh, campus uh, is about halfway, oh, yeah. half a mile well, that way. Right? We have a great, it's a great location. And in fact, it, talk about serendipity. This was the building we were, were able to acquire. It was an SGI building. And so uh, the nice thing about the way the museum has worked is on the dot-com uh, bubble, we were able to get secure a lot of uh, commitments for uh, funding and uh, and uh, buying, you know, and and creating a museum I mean, you know, to the tune of over fifty million dollars worth. And then the dot com, and so we were planning a new building and all of that stuff. And then the dot com hit. Uh, SGI fell on some hard times, had to divest themselves of buildings, and we were able to pick up the uh, this building, which to me is probably the ultimate uh, museum building. I mean, it's, there's a lot of symbology there, but uh, it's just a very, very wonderful building for a museum. Yeah. So we were really, you know, so we've had two pieces of great luck uh, since coming to the valley. Well, it's, it, it's the, do, the dot com bubble going up yeah. and then exploding, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's I mean, interesting because it's going to be an issue. Yeah, because tour. if it hadn't exploded, we wouldn't right. have been able to pick up right. Our, right. Our, right. Our, right. Our, yeah. or the SGI explosion. Yeah, it seems like you guys are still collecting. Oh, right? oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, collecting is never a never-ending uh, uh, 
uh, function, and in fact, it's, I'd say it's our primary function uh, to continue. And, and it's well, and it's very hard, you know, given the breadth of, of computing today. But uh, and, you know, we have a, a lot of things we want to do, and it's in a way a lot. A lot of what's being done is really done by an incredibly active volunteer group. Yeah. There are uh, there are people that, 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 that spend uh, uh, as much as uh, you know. We've got people who actually spend two thousand two thousand or more hours a year as volunteers do you know working in it. And, and some famous technologists work here, right? Douglas Engelbart, I hear, does uh, tours and. Uh, yeah, I think Doug has given some tours, but we've got uh, you know fun you know people. Come and give their own uh, sort of own 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 tour. Uh, do you everybody. do very many tours? Uh, not really. No. I get, uh, <laughs> so we're getting a. a is, we're honored by the way to be here. You know, so. Sort of once a year tour I'm giving. Hey, there's Dan. Yeah. We finally got done with the car, huh? Yeah, for more, he went and you, if you want to tape it, he's got it all set up. Okay. Oh, let's well, we'll, yeah, we we'll film that after the tour. Okay. You know, and we will? get it. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, wait. You, you guys have to take off. Do you or not? So we're okay. So we're I'm so here. So. Okay. I'm here. So. Now, who are you? Hey, uh, we met you inside actually. It's uh, <laughs> okay, you but uh, co-founder of Next and a few other things, right? Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting Silicon Valley tour, right? So yeah. let's go. So, so right. here we're at the entryway. Wait, I need to take Hello? a picture of him doing this. Yeah. Well, here is the museum. Yeah, and so is there any charge for an average attendee to come in? No, admission is free. However, we do accept donations. Okay, very cool. Well, hold on, let me give you some money then. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> Very cool. Cash, and um, uh, is the museum open? When is the museum open? It's open three days a week. Okay. Uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, and then we have scheduled tours throughout the afternoons. Okay. And you're giving a tour to, to the CoJam contest right now. I, I saw a couple of tours go through. Yes. Well, thanks. Uh, has the museum been a hit? I mean, here in Silicon Valley, it's certainly. Oh, yes. And it's, a, it's been a great hit. We relocated from the East Coast um, about 10 years ago. And we're still a museum in the making. We're building out our exhibit space and um, some major news to announce about that very, very shortly. Excellent. Very cool. Well, thanks for... Uh, uh, greeting us. <laughs> so yeah, let's go and uh, sh okay. show us your show us what's cool about the museum. Since uh, uh, well, here let's uh, go in. Uh, nice looking museum. Yeah. Like, have I ever? Are you, have you like, been here before? No. No. Oh, okay. Well, this is wonderful. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is an area called visible storage, which is a thousand, about uh, eleven thousand square feet, and this is really. Uh, not intended to be an exhibit per se, but in fact is is taking the collection, parts of the collection, about probably about a tenth of the collection, bringing it out and displaying it so that people can get an idea of, it turns out, the history of computing because it is organized in a serpentine fashion and so we start uh, really uh, kind of at the beginning. Okay. Um, Come on, guys. Yeah. Uh, so you walk in and you're greeted by this wall of... Uh, this is, yeah, this, uh, for now, uh, uh, this is the part, of the part of the PC wall, but uh, uh, it starts over here. Okay. We start at the very, kind of the very beginning, and some of the early artifacts are uh, sort of the counting devices, the uh, a collection, a bunch of, of uh, Abakai and uh, Soroban, and uh, devices for counting and... Uh, uh, representing numbers uh, uh, and teaching, uh, teaching with you. Okay. And then uh, as you move along, are, are any of these significant or are they just. Uh, it, well, to somebody that. I'll say everything. To somebody, everything is significant. Okay. But the. Uh, uh, you know, there. I don't think uh, th this is probably the oldest piece we have, which is a thing called Napier's Bones, and that's a piece from uh, you know a little over uh, uh, you know 400 years, uh, and it it's a device for it's fundamentally a table. You take those little those little uh, square uh, rods there and turn them around. Okay. This is the beginning of. And then that forms a multiplicand, and then what you do is then are able to 
uh, use that to, uh, as, as multipliers, and you're able to create a, uh, a, multi uh, a uh, multiplication tables. Um, and kind of you can think of that almost as the beginning of, of sort of moving stepped wheels and mechanical, uh, doing mechanical arithmetic. And where would that be used? Would that be that used? Was, a, that was really used for people just to multiply numbers together. There's also, we have a huge table somewhere of just table of, of three digit mul numbers multiplied by three digit numbers. And so just to, uh, to uh, uh, that, you know, in the days when. And now these are all uh, devices for uh, uh, for cal for um, uh, navigation, yep. and then this, and then all this is the sort of the beginning of, of slide rules and stuff like that. So these would be aimed at the moon. Yeah, uh, these were all for ang angles, and then being able to uh, to compute where what. Yeah, where you given you know what time of the year is where you were. So, so this, this is, is the uh, virtual Earth or the Google yeah. Maps. Yeah, of the, uh, um, that all all I had to do in navigation, and yeah. then those sort of morphed into a bunch of of, of slide rules, and slide rules and sectors are very closely related. And these are circular slide rules, and then uh, cylindrical slide rules. Yeah. Now my dad used one of these in engineering school. Oh, yeah. Did you use one of these? When yeah. You were at... Let's see. I don't know if mine is in here or not. It, uh, uh, I think I may have taken it back because there's plenty of slide rules. But I think I had this one, which is a log log duplex decitrig. Yeah. And um, and it, for the kids who have never seen these, because my my son oh, has yeah. never ever seen a slide oh, okay. rule. Right? How, how does this thing work? How did you use it? Well, I mean, what it is is a collect in, a, in effect a, a collection of tables. So I mean, one of the things that you did was was uh, was multiplication. So analog multiplication. So you could do about a uh, two th or about a three-digit multiply with that, uh, and you'd put uh, you'd put the uh, multiplier this multiplier opposite. Uh, uh, say that two, and then two times two, and you read the four off the other thing. So there's the two, two at the bottom. The one is, one is set up there, and then you look at, uh, and so in a sense, it's it's a way of adding with logs. You're adding is multiplication. So you fundamentally, it's a way of, of, of doing addition. Very cool. Um, this is, uh, these are, in fact, here's the table, uh, I was talking about the table of products there, and that's, uh, so you can uh, take one yeah. number times another number yeah. and, uh, and find out the answer there, and then uh, what's important about, more important about this is the beginning of the, uh, of kind of digital computing, this is a uh, jacquard loom, and this was um, for, for making uh, uh, making uh, 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 cloth, and in fact, in this case, here's a picture of Jacquard. That's a silk weaving. So that's actually a talk about pixels uh, one by one. That's a thousand, hundred, hundred, uh, hundred by hundred resolution. Hundred by hundred resolution on. So on that, that picture is actually yeah. a silk weaving. That's a silk weaving. Yeah. Wow. And done with this technology. Done with that this technology. Wow. And, uh, and this was really the beginning of the computer age. Yeah, right? this was this is where the whole thing that triggered uh, punch cards. So this is the whole, whole idea of punch cards. Yeah. Uh, and here it talks yeah. about programming. Yeah, punch cards exactly. Right. And then, uh, and have then, you actually used that to make any cloth? Uh, I've never made. I mean, I've seen it done. Uh, they use it, you know, in uh, you know various parts. Still done in you know various parts of the world where they make. Uh, uh, weave rugs. And this technology is what, about 100 or so well, years? No, it's 200 years old. 200 years old. 1800s, uh, early 1800s. And then Babbage used that idea of uh, that was what he was going to control, uh, punch card control. Yep. Um, and then here we have just a, a kind of a nice, beautiful history of, uh, of, uh, uh, of calculators, uh, of the evolution of digital uh, calculators. Uh, one of the, probably the first one is this one by uh, Pascal. Uh, this is a, actually a model. There are only about five of these left in the world. And this is uh, 
1650. Um, but, um, if you wanted to see an original one, do you, have I, you ever seen an original? Yeah, one? I've seen an original. There are, I think they're all, mostly, I think they're almost all in uh, France uh, at, at one of the museums there. Okay. Uh, and then these were triggered, some of these others, this Thomas arithmometer was a triggering, triggered that off, and that was a, uh, about, you know, a little bit later, uh, kind of a uh, more of a, a production model. And then you've got a, a lot of these, you know, I'd say quite beautiful calculators here that were, these were all the, this was the basis of, of sci well, scientific computing and also commerce. Uh, the commerce one, I'd say the main commerce calculator was this thing called a comptometer. That's and down there. And that's down there. That only does adding and subtracting. And uh, that was really how people, uh, you know, how corporations kept their books. Uh, their books. And so you had, you know, there were, you used to go to comptometer school. And so there were just a sea of people just doing arithmetic uh, yeah. with, those, with those devices. Um, and now you can see things get a little bit more industrial. Yeah, yeah, better in. design. And, uh, and then this is a nice piece here. This is, uh, this is one of the first uh, calculators that multi add, add, subtract, multiply, divide. And in fact, in there is a ROM that, in fact, uh, uh, as you, that thing there is the, the multiplier. It's so you the, change this to you change multiply? that, and then you turn it around, and that. Add, that mul that adds that multiplicand to whatever is the multiplicand to to the sum uh, to the evolving sum and then moves it shifts it over one and then you just keep you do a st essentially a step and repeat of uh, adding in the partial product. Now, how many digits can this? Uh, this one I think is was ten uh, ten digits. There, so there we're were stepping three, through times. Yeah, and see, there were there, the, these guys made like three models. There was a six-digit, I, I a six-digit, an eight-digit, I think a ten-digit. That was the, at the high end. Of, All right. Of what was there. now this. This is a 1895, so uh, 18, yeah. So we've fact, already this, walked 100, 100 yeah, years. Yeah, this is right? Uh, right. And then this this thing was by 1935, it was getting old in the tooth as as uh, uh, as people started to put motors on them. And in fact, the, in its last gasp, we actually have its last gasp, which is has a mo there's a motorized version of this yeah. that does all of the all of the stuff. Very but, cool. Uh, I don't think it works. <laughs> or we're afraid to. You're afraid to touch it. <laughs> the motor that old is going to sort of go up, go up in smoke. And then, yeah. well, here, so we moved from the cards over uh, the Hallworth cards that were, um, uh, or, or the cards that were part of uh, Jacquard to uh, Hallworth uh, getting in business here to do the 1890 uh, census, and that was. Sort of the beginning of beginning of IBM because this ultimately got sold to to IBM and created uh, uh, and created the uh, IBM company. Wow! So this is the beginning. That this is the beginning of IBM. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Now who are you? Yeah, well, I'm John Tool, executive director and CEO here at the museum. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, joining our little tour here. Well, he's one of my mentors. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it's an awesome museum. Yeah. You know, we've only thank come uh, hundred years, right? Yeah, we have, I know. We, we have another hundred years to go. go. <laughs> and all, all the cool stuff happens in the second hundred years. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, we always think actually the, in the last uh, three years. Yeah, I mean the way computing is. And, yeah. Oh yeah, it's the latest, it's the best. But, uh, well, I'm reading a book right now. Um, um, called the singularity is coming, and he's talking oh, yeah. about exponential yeah. Yeah. Uh, change in the world, and you can really see it that yeah. it's exponential, right? Because exactly. Uh, exactly. it starts with three digits, it goes to ten digits, and now we're up to how many digits? Maybe a thousand. Well, this, well, this or would be eighty column card. My uh, column card. Eighty so, column card. Yeah, that's what. Okay. That was the beginning of that, and it was uh, patterned after a, uh, essentially a dollar bill, so it's the same size. Of, oh, what used to be so they could use all the infrastructure of saving things from dollar bills. And such. Yeah. My dad used to bring stacks of uh, punch cards home all right. in the very late days, <laughs> so, which was basically yeah. based on the same style of uh, memory keeping, right? Yeah. Well, this was, uh, you know, that's where all the pro programs got entered in that, uh, in that way. Cool. Um,
and really this whole area here is just you know record punch card kind of equipment. Yeah, this is this got really strongly evolved, and uh, I'd say going strong. Uh, Still uh, clear up until probably 1950. Okay. Uh, and then computing uh, started to be in introduced. Then you could see the see the potential end of it. But uh, these were the. Uh, in fact, there's a multiplying uh, calculator down there that was really the basis of doing a lot of. Uh, the calculations during the war that uh, was used for the atomic bomb. This was done. Uh, Los Alamos had had equipment like this, and, and you know, one of our last artifacts we accessioned was like in the '90s, a Unirecord sorter. Oh uh, yeah, not. Really? Because other industries were using punch cards for different things all the time. Uh, now, what's this thing behind you here? Uh, the okay, these are all, and this is another branch that. For, for a short period of time, people used to argue, oh, is it going to be an analog computer or is it going to be digital? And so this analog computing was uh, a way of uh, was basically setting up a problem and you made, you, thick, you made an analog circuit that was the, quote, the analog of the problem and then you used that to run, run on there. And then you had some real-time things. This, uh, fairly complicated stuff going on. These were... These were the World War II uh, Norton bomb sites. These were really highly, highly proprietary, and this was the basis for, uh, for controlling bombing. Uh, so these controlled the bombing in yeah, World that, War II? Yeah, they look at, you know, they had wind, they had all kinds, you know, directions. So you had a piece of machinery that the avionics of the aircraft was actually put into it. So it was really a computing device, yeah. but high performance in terms of the optics and this kind of thing. And these don't look too expensive today, but I bet back in oh, their day I mean, these, these would be millions oh, of dollars. These are all precision little... devices. Yeah. yeah. No, they are very expensive. Very, very yeah. Expensive. And <laughs> how many of these exist anymore in the world? Um, it's hard to tell. I mean, uh, I don't know if we I get a lot of collection. Might know yeah, but we, you know, uh, the important thing is anytime we get an op op opportunity to get some, get some more, those are things that we want to Cool. Want to keep? Uh, we'll keep keep moving yeah, here. Let's keep moving, and uh, sort of these evolved into uh, these were uh, 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 digital form. So this was the sort of analog circuitry, and then people said, "Oh, we'll make a digital version of that and do the same right. kind of thing." And so that was another technology that. Right. Was, this is one of a kind. This is <laughs> down the West Coast. Okay. Uh, kind of a general purpose kind of computing device. It almost looked like an integrated circuit, magnified, right? Yeah. It looks. Uh, it was written up in the Annals of Computing History. Mm. And, uh, and what did this do? Well, it was to do a general purpose computing device from, from an analog process that they tried to design. Uh, most of the West Coast stuff really doesn't get the attention that it really happened, but this actually was a case where uh, this, this was a very substantial piece of artifacts to have, and it's one yep. of a kind. Yeah, I, um, yeah, this one was uh, yeah, programmed, uh, I don't know where the programming of this, this is undoubtedly patched together or something. So. Yeah. It's almost a hybrid. Yeah. Like the way that it actually, actually works, I believe. Mm -hmm. You can see parts of it up at the top, right? Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I mean, it's awesome when you think of these people trying to invent these things. Yep. And the magnitude of these types of inventions, it's sort of mind-boggling. Yeah. And now we've only seen, we've come 150 years, and we've seen only a yeah, yeah. small fraction of the yeah, collection, the collection here. That's right. Yeah. That's in right. fact, <laughs> we have about a tenth on display. Exactly. exactly. Right. Right. Only a tenth is in this room. Yeah. Whole room. Right. Yeah. yeah. Whole room. Right. Completely. Um, uh, then this is a thing that's probably as fascinating to anybody uh, uh, around, and this is the Enigma. This was what was used by uh, Germany for. Uh, uh, in the World War II to, to transmit uh, secret messages, secret, right? secret messages, yep. and then this was was broken by the uh, uh, by the English in uh, in in with a machine uh, that was really kind of the forerunner of of lot. They had special purpose machines, including this one that Turing had worked on to help do code breaking. So basically, you're just running a lot of a lot of data through, a lot of messages through uh, filters and then looking for. And that was reconstructed and actually working in Bletchley Park. And that pulley is from an actual Colossus. Yeah. In fact, Churchill 
demanded that it be broken up and destroyed because they're very secret. And you can only save pieces as large as your hand. And as you can see, that's probably what the large pieces. Yeah, that's probably the large. Yeah, we were. That's too bad. To get that that, yeah. that kind of history is gone. Because today's cryptography far outstrips the capabilities exactly. of this machine. Yeah, right? exactly. Sure. I yeah. think the yeah. was done. Oh yeah. By the people in the. Really, yeah. the philosophy and the, the, the algorithms that came yeah, out. Yeah, I interviewed the uh, cryptography guys at Microsoft, and they were talking yeah. about. Yeah, this but this is, is where it started. You know, yeah, the early days. Early, yeah. yeah, this is. Exactly. Yeah, this is. 60, so we've come 60 years from here. Yeah. So. Well, this is a very substantial machine. This is. This is a oh, this is my favorite. Uh, oh, yeah. This is probably my favorite part. Uh, of this. And this is a piece on loan from the Smithsonian, a, a tube machine at the Moore School of Engineering. Eckerd Mockley put this together. Uh, it was a. Uh, not a stored memory machine, okay, so it was a digital computer per se, but the memory wasn't stored, so you had to really use wires to plug it up. Of course, it would have consumed the better part of this room. Yeah. Okay, and it's, it's so this is only a very small piece, small of, yeah. piece of it. Right. I think when I, I, I toured the Boston Museum, you had, yeah. and you had a, you? a couple of more pieces, didn't you? Uh, not really. I think this is about all we have. The the original, I think, is in the Smith, uh, yeah. is in the, Smithsonian. The Smithsonian has all yeah. of it, so they this is on loan. From Okay, and I think there's some at the Moore School. And, uh, there's not much left. I mean, yeah, in fact, we, uh, yeah, in fact, amazing. all of the tubes. Uh, we didn't even have the tubes. In fact, we had re we found That's the right. tubes here. So these were all right. uh, filled up. With Smithsonian's permission, uh, we had a, a really expert in tube technology replace it. You know, one for one in terms of yeah. the so it's wild. Was and it's real day. Yeah. Wow. You may be thinking, Bob, of this. this yeah, uh, this is probably. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure this is what lots saw, of those kind of pieces that we had. Yeah, this looked the same thing. This was. Uh, uh, these are. Uh, this is. This was the MIT Whirlwind computer. That's part, sort of a forerunner to the Sage uh, Sage system. The uh, 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 thing for radar for detecting the Russian planes coming over the over the North Pole. Right. And it was uh, in, essentially in a building, and so you can. You know, there are rows and rows of what looked like a tele, you know, a telephone. Uh, this is a better view of sort of looking down, down a row, an aisle of that. By the way, each of these uh, bays here is was a kind of a bit slice. So you had about three or four bits of uh, all the all the registers. It was 16 bits. So essentially, think of a 16 bit that's 32 feet long. Yeah. Or, yeah. So this was the story also, yeah. I mean, of really why the museum got started the Marlboro, right? Yeah. I mean, Ken Olson was actually a graduate student that worked on a whirlwind, okay, yeah. founded Digital Equipment Corporation, yeah. right? And uh, well, you, you ought to tell the story about uh, yeah. the whirlwind trying to, trying to find a home for it yeah. and couldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, it was one of these things of, you know, people wanted to throw it away. Threw it away. In fact, it wanted, one of the people who had worked on it, uh, a guy by the name of Bill Wolf. Had had it, he was going to reconstruct. It had been dismantled. He wanted to reconstruct it, but uh, you know it was really impractical to re rebuild it. And uh, so he had all the parts, and it turned out that he uh, he uh, Ken Olson and uh, Bob Effort, who both worked on World Wind, were able to get the uh, to get it from. And then we had it in, in trailers in the back of a, a deck parking lot. No, we would take it, right? I mean, yeah, the no, Sony didn't want no, it. they didn't want it. And, and Ken finally said, "Let's bring it here. We'll start yeah, a so, computer history yeah, museum." Yeah, so we which used that as a, Gordon and yeah. Gwen's uh, dream yeah. way back in '79. Now, who's Gwen? My my wife, Gwen. So and she she was she, she really this, you know did the first yeah. uh, put pulled it all together and yeah. and made it. She made the Marlboro one. Came made back. the made right. the uh, transition to uh, uh, to Boston, and yeah. then and then we all. Help uh, Lynn and uh, Lynn and Gwen and I essentially were instrumental in making the transition, uh, getting all the artifacts out of Boston and bringing them here, and that's when it, w it was in the hangar at Moffat, and then and then that was the that was in '95, I guess, when we first mm -hmm. made. Mumbai. So is this the beginning of Deck? Uh, you know. Yeah, in a kind of funny way, the early deck, uh, deck uh, uh, Ken worked on Whirlwind, worked on the machine. He worked on the core memory that 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 went on to Whirlwind, the first core, first memory, and then uh, then worked on the transistor circuits, TX0 circuitry. Uh, that really was the beginning of deck. Yeah. Are those really registers? 
Uh, are they registers in the same bit. Bit? Yeah. That, that's a bit? That's a bit. One one of these plates is, is a, a bit. bit. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, and not even uh, not even all. See the, what history has done and, over time. And, not and that's a flip flop. Not yeah. even all the gate. Yeah. And not yeah. even all the gate. Hold on a second. You see, like yeah. I've got this camera here. Yeah. Not even all the gate. Wait, you think? And the, how many bits are in here? Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll see the. It was 16 bit computer, and, and as I like to say, it's 32 feet long. <laughs> So and this the, is the 50s, right? 1950. Oh, many gigabytes or so. of memory. Yeah. Taking a picture of eight bits of memory. Yeah. Oh, it, <laughs> what's, what's even fun? I, I told you this. I, I I have 500 megs of RAM on my cell phone. Sure. And w w w my little cell phone has more RAM and more storage what? and more. Let me know. Then probably all the way <laughs> until we get to the Google. You the can't the even one that I love for that story. story is this piece. This looks yeah, like this is a jet engine, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So this is like 2,000 bytes. Period. Two thousand bytes, not bit, not, not megabyte. There, there were ten of them <laughs> in the Univac one. The Univac one was the kind of the commercial product from the ENIAC. Yeah. All right, that they came out. They took mercury in here and they and they mod, they put sound waves. They could modulate modulate the mercury with sound waves, which became a delay line. The delay line itself can be used as a memory device. Yeah. Okay. And so this was the creativity of these people back then. I mean, it's unbelievable that this thing would actually produce. And Univac right. one was the first machine to. Predict presidential elections. Wow! Uh, so it, it's were they any accurate, more accurate back then than they are now? <laughs> they predicted it right. They predicted. They were totally you just didn't spill a lot. They predicted. They predicted um, yeah. that Eisenhower was going to win. Actually, yeah. yeah. But they couldn't really do it. Kind of they it, there's a whole. He was win? Oh, oh. Never mind. So, <laughs> the press do this. Yeah. So, oh, that's right. That's that famous that headline. You put that famous headline. That was Truman. Though. Truman. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm confusing. <laughs> now what? Now, now the computers get bigger and and more impressive, right? So now you're into John von Neumann machines. Okay. Which one? John von Neumann machines. Okay. So there were eight or nine of those around the world. One, the first one in Princeton. This is one was done that implemented that architecture. Uh, the Rand Corporation in 1954. So this is Rand Corporation. Rand Corporation built this one, one of a kind. Um, interesting operating system here too. It was kind of a time-sharing operating system, and that little keyboard was, was, a, was a terminal, and those little buttons over there were time slots that were orders of minutes as opposed to orders of microseconds that we know as time-sharing today. Yeah. And this whole engineering, it's an incredible engineering feat they did. It was, this was a, an artifact that was almost lost. It was in the L.A. County Museum, and apparently um, they lost the paperwork on it, and they were going to throw it out. Keith Ungerfer and Willis Ware, the two of the designers of this thing, saw it in the backyard and called Boston. They did kind of a rescue effort. Yeah, well, it, this was a great, great rescue. And, uh, this was in a dumpster, basically. Exactly. Yeah, right. almost and ready to right, go. Right. And then we ended up uh, moving it to Boston, and then and then now moving it back here, and and then also they the guys did a great job of restoring it and sort of you know getting the tubes and making it. Uh, now, how, how much work went into goes into restoring these to make these computers well, displayable? Do any of them work? Uh, we have some. Uh, well, here's the, one for example. Here's one. Let's we, go. We, ah, we do special restorations. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, go ahead. A lot, there's a lot of hobbyists that just get the things to work. Sorry, you go. Okay. A lot of people just get the things to work. What we're trying to do is kind of an architectural dig of of information. Yeah. And so this is at IBM 1620, okay? Though the team of volunteers worked on this all oh, the better part of a year, year and a half, okay, on, on the weekends, okay? And restored this completely to life. And in fact, they can power this thing up. And yeah, we, it runs. on a previous tour, I saw You've this seen running. It, yeah. Yeah. In addition, it actually has Windows running. So what does it do? What, what kind of software does it run? Oh, the, the, well, we use for a demonstration just a, a powers of two. Yeah, or something, just something that takes that much like memory that, does it have? Like that on a, on a calculator? It's, uh, and it takes forever to do it. I don't remember how much memory. It's uh, maybe, what, uh, 60,000 uh, decimal characters. 60,000 decimal characters. Yeah. 60, yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about this. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah, yeah, that's like. Well, that's like uh, put yeah. 60K in or our... Or 32K, 30, 32K bytes. Is that right? Yeah. It didn't have an oh, arithmetic right. union either. It, was a, do it was a table lookup. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so a lot of... Uh, it turns out, uh, you know, I... Frankly, you know, we were competing with it at the same time. I wasn't very interested in the machine because yeah. I thought it was, that's yeah. kind of a dumb machine. But, uh, but yeah. in well, fact, it, we've year, got... There's year? a lot of people that really programmed on it. So what we year, had a, what uh, year was it? 
uh, 1959. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it was. When you say you were competing with it, what were you competing with uh, it with? With the PDP-1. We just okay. introduced that in the What was the PDP-1? Uh, it was a transistorized, also a transistorized machine, one of the first transistorized machines. And yeah, that's what a restoration have, by the way. Did so it have the, across the, across space the lobby? War, or do we, it, did it, have an, did it have an arithmetic unit? It, oh yeah, it had an instruction sure. set. What kind of instruction uh, set? Was it was a single single address instruction set. Okay. It was Dex first uh, first computer. Got it. Okay. Um, anyway, it's uh, and we and and there's, they've been restoring a PDP one. P, significance about the PDP one, at least we're as in the restoration, is that we're, it runs Space War. So it's kind of the first computer game that was out there. And uh, What's fun for me to come to the museum is every visit I've had is a different experience. The last time I was here, this thing was powered up, yeah. and there were two guys who actually worked on this yeah, thing, yeah. Yeah. and they were teaching people how to program it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so what was the 